Welcome, you're listening to the Leading Out Podcast. My name is VJ Williams, here with my friend and pastor, Kevin Jack. Thank you for joining us and taking time out of your day to become a better leader. If you're new, we release a new episode every Wednesday. We would love for you to join us on uh, your favorite podcast <laughs> platform. I was going to say my favorite podcast platform, uh, which I do Apple. Do you do Apple? No, no we've you talked do, about this before. You do. Yeah, but it's been months. Pocket Casts. Do you, do you really use the Pocket Cast? Because I can dial in the speed exactly how I want it. Oh, so you mean you can go like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3? Yeah. Like, what do you listen at? 6.7? Uh, <laughs> I actually have started to. So you ready? He listens to 17 podcasts in an hour. No, because I used to listen to everything like that in audiobooks at yeah. two times the speed. Yeah, I knew that. And then I really think it was what was making me talk faster than I should. Oh, that's funny. So I was like, this is a normal conversation break. This is how everybody talks all the time. So why wouldn't I talk all the time like this, even in messages? And I was like, you know what? I should probably. So I've tried to dial it back to 1.5, yeah. which has lowered my listening. But I think it's readjusted me to a regular oh, well, level. That's a good. See there. There's a. You didn't think that's an extra bonus content right there. <laughs> what speed to listen to your podcast at? Uh, put it in, uh, in, in in the comment. I'd love to know what you guys listen to our podcast. Like the rate that you. Yeah, I would have. too. Put it in the DMs or put it oh, in one of the comic sections. I want to acknowledge. Yeah. If people are increasing our speed, I'm offended. Oh. <laughs> why they're just they're getting because get, we talk fast maybe they go back and no watch but if more. they if they're like like oh i listen to you guys at two times the guys. speed i got you if they say i listen to you at two times the speed i'm doubling my speed <laughs> <laughs> we are getting that much more content in in 20 minutes i'm not saying i'm offended That's, that you're listening to me fast no, no, i'm I just like it. i got it i got it I'm with you guys. Just tell us. Just tell us. I just, I just tell us what it is. I want to know what 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 speed you listen to it at. But if you're new, we're we're glad that you're here and that you have downloaded and that you subscribed. Also, uh, share it with a friend on Facebook, <laughs> YouTube, or Instagram, and please rate and review on Apple Podcasts. You won't believe how that helps get this podcast in the hands of so many more leaders just like you. Listen to that to 2.5 right there. Uh, and visit leadinghope.online to get updates. Find out more about the Leading Hope community. This is episode two two eight. You've titled this, Helping You Think Strategically. Yeah. Strategically. So this is uh, yep. this is like an elementary basic thing for non-strategists. Okay. And I think the concern is that non-strategists don't realize that they're not strategists. Oh. So I don't know how to help you identify that. No, so we won't ask questions about how to identify non-strategists. Yeah. Hey, how do you identified <laughs> you would naturally find yourself in a spot in which you're not thinking long-term solutions you're not thinking system solutions That's good everything is blaming the initial thing that happens in the moment yeah uh i find non-strategists don't realize in any way things like i would say like if you don't see how the problems you're facing are preventable you're a non-strategist great and That's like great People see that now, but like never for themselves. Like, well, and this happened, but we couldn't have seen that. This happened, and like, I almost think that's the phrase. Like, but we couldn't see that coming, or yeah. no one knew, no one could predict that. Like, yeah, that's people really could. Good. Uh, <laughs> it's the other thing too. It, it just to tag onto that is uh, every time you meet with the person, they say the same problem every time. Yep. That's a non-strategist, right? Yep. Okay. Exactly. Okay. It's great. Good. <laughs> so I just want to like give kind of like just a really basic framework for non-strategists on how to help you think strategically. Yeah. And uh, I could share it like like one of the things uh, uh, someone close to me not that long ago, they're talking through personal life decisions and how they had moved and done this other stuff to prevent these problems. I don't want to get into real stupid specifics on it. But then like pointing out, they didn't realize how the ways in which they were solving their current problems were creating worse future problems. Gotcha. And just to point out to them, like, you realize that if you do this in about four years, this is going to happen. Yeah. And they were like, oh my gosh. I've never thought about that. Mm. And so not just like for their leadership and others. When I say leadership, I don't mean just their work leadership. I mean, their all of life leadership that being able to prevent the trains from colliding yeah, yeah, is important. Yeah, yeah. I think we need to retitle this to to, a, to prevent the four year fall, <laughs> prevent the four year fall. <laughs> before the trains crash <laughs> there we go 
There you go. It's good. It's good. <laughs> and then what happens is we title this before the trains crash, and there's someone who's a conductor of a train, and the brakes go out, oh and they quickly Google looking for a response, <laughs> and they've got us for 20 minutes no, going back and that forth. That is terrible. That is terrible. <laughs> no, please, All no. Right. Please, no. So four questions, just real basic framework to help you think strategically. Good. And um, this is meant to be initiated uh, not within the midst of a problem. So, okay. yeah. Meant to be initiated within is, some white space. This is preventive. Yeah. Got it. So here's the first question. What problems am I repeatedly solving? Because strategy is a response to a problem. That's good. What problems do you keep facing over and over again? That's great. Um, maybe a really helpful practice is every time you have to solve a problem or deal with an issue, write it down. Oh, that's great. Like, it's just super simple. Yeah. On there. Uh, I remember Andy Stanley... Uh, talked to years ago about how uh, with his kids they had chores and every single week he would heckle and heckle and heckle his son about taking out the trash and he goes and then I thought this is stupid I'm I'm blaming the boy I'm blaming his lack of work ethic and I'm leading a large organization so the next week I got home he had to take out the trash I got up I took out the trash the son comes out to me he's like oh dad thank you so much I'm sorry I forgot he goes it's fine I get your allowance this week yeah it's like what <laughs> It's like, yeah, no, no, you don't do your chore. I get your allowance. That's great. You do it next week, you get it. That's a strategy. That's a strategy. It is like rewards, punishment. That's a strategy to yeah. solve a problem. That's great. So just first piece, what problem am I repeatedly solving? Now, here's, the, here's where this, like, the strategists and the non-strategists divide in their intuitive understanding okay. of this next question. But we need to drill down into it. Why am I repeatedly solving this problem? Yeah. Okay. So on um, on the one hand, if I'm blaming human nature, they just won't, they just can't, they never, these people, if I'm blaming human nature, it's a strategy issue. Okay. Yep. If you think I've got to get the right people, the certain specific group, and something's always wrong with this group, what you're actually pointing out is your lack of understanding that this is really a strategy issue. Um, I don't believe, unless if there are maniacal people, that people want to do a poor job. Yeah. And so if you're just blaming that, then you showing you haven't equipped the system with the strategies that are needed for success. Good. Now, there is a big difference between attention to manage and a problem to solve. Yep. So, attention to manage is um, uh, excellence versus development. Excellence and development are on two opposite ends of the pendulum. Yes. And we'll swing it back and forth. Yep. And sometimes we have errors because development. Yep. And so, we'll bring it up and we'll go, why did we have this error? And say, well, we had this person in place they made this decision other stuff awesome we'll try to figure out some other developmental pieces we need to put in place but just to acknowledge that like not every problem is a problem to solve sometimes it's you're managing the tension back and forth yeah rarely defined but absolute yeah yeah good so anything else we need to jump into on that feel nope. good nope yep cool just to hit people to say like you've got to actually drill down to that question because if everything becomes um, people who are non-strategists think they always need more strategy. Strategists understand the simplest strategies are always the most effective. Right. And so this is the difference between the organization that has like a five-page handbook and an organization that has a 120-page handbook. Yeah. The 120-page handbook was written by non-strategists. Yeah, it was meant for the person that doesn't know how to think for themselves. Yeah, but but it's like the person who wrote it doesn't understand that actually the few simple strategies are always the most effective, and some of these things won't ever fully be solved, Right, and the pendulum's meant to swing back and forth. Cool. That's great. Third question. This is the most important, okay? Okay. So once you've worked through that, how do I future fix it? Okay. How do I solve this problem in a way that I don't have to keep solving it over and over again? And so you're trying to create the systems in place, the outline of process that needs to be there in order for it to continuously improve. Now, I want to give the caveat. You will not. You're trying to future fix it. 
you will never future fix it because there will always be more problems. Right. So what you're really trying to do is you're trying to future improve it. Yeah. That I don't have to touch it again, and it won't it won't regress back to this point. But I will have to touch it again to keep it taking steps forward. That's good. Yep. So uh, that's it. Uh, how do I future improve it? Perfection isn't the goal. Improvement is. And then the last step on this is what are potential problems? And I'll just say it like this real simply. Two steps down the line. Because what really is. So you're, you're walking through a scenario in which you're going. If I solve this. What happens? And then from that, what happens? Right. So there's this um, uh, great uh, systematic process thing for identifying problems, and it's called the five whys. Yeah. It is like, what we do, this is the problem. Why? Well, because of this. Why? Because of that. And it's meant to give the five whys so we're never solving the problems right on the surface. We're always solving the deeper issues. Right. And I, uh, what I found is that people understand that. Uh, non-strategist, not as much, but like that type of thinking is integrated within a lot of teaching. What isn't integrated is if we impose this application, if we create this solution, what are the ramifications of that? Yeah. So we'll, we'll drive it deep of why, 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 why. And so we can get to the root cause, but then you need to drive it up and you go, okay, so if we do this, then what's the implication of this? in the implication of this, in the implication of this. Yeah. And so you're really trying to figure out, hey, I'll just say it simply like this. Let's just start with two steps down the line and just imagine the scenario. If we do this, what happens? And then from that, what happens? Yeah. Because I believe at the core that strategic thinking is really future forecasting. And so as you're imagining those possible scenarios in the future, it enables you to get a better base of what is the most effective decision now. And I, and I agree with the three. How do how do I future fix this? I think that could be or is the most important. I don't know, man. That number four is really really important because yeah. for 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 growing very vision de determined organizations or oriented for organizations. Accurate. Meaning, um, I think most people love to know the problems uh, on the on the on the bright side positive side like uh if i fix this these people will be able to do their uh role in extract way better or yep. differently or more impact but they don't think about all the other things that it might cause on the other end absolutely as they're doing the positive side what are the problems i'm causing not the problems i'm fixing yeah which is the two steps ahead yep which is so important i don't think organizations holistically um think that way I think it's usually only, hey, what am I fixing? What am I causing to? Which is 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 important in this whole. And I found within strategy. there, uh, non-strategists avoid present pain, and they like yeah. strategies that don't have present pain. Yes, strategists willingly yeah. embrace yeah. present pain. Oh, man, yeah. For future impact. Yeah, on purpose. And so, like, like almost, almost on purpose. Like an example was. Uh, so we recently split our team into three teams yeah. to prep ourselves for future campuses. Yeah. So we have a campus team. We'll have multiple campus teams. We have a central team and yep. an innovation team. Yep. And like, it was like, it is hard. Yeah. And the comment was made early on. They're like, we're not working as well together now as we used to. Yeah. Like, You're correct. Yeah. This was not made like this was not, this decision was not made as a benefit of the culture. The culture is meant to withstand it. Yeah. This is a this move was made for future effectiveness. Right. And it's really messy now. Right. But we believe two years from now, it's gonna be like magnitude of impact greater. Right. And that's I think that's so important. Just a, even a small example in between uh, the our our sessions today, our episodes, uh, Matt Dees, who is doing all the producing today, I said, What you working on? And he's working on some stuff. Uh, now a library of things he's putting together that is going to benefit he's putting himself through a lot of pain today is what i'm yeah. saying that's going to benefit him so much down the road where he gets all that time back and um that's work that we have to be willing to enter as a Absolutely. strategist so that we can actually be more effective he's not when we say he gets the time back it's not time to go like he's not gonna go surfing 
<laughs> like, yep. like you know what I mean? He's not going to go play. You know, he's got more time to spend with his teams to develop them instead of doing the task. Yep. And there's a strategy involved here to do that, and he's entered it into it. And I, I will almost give like the maybe to go all the way back to the beginning is helping people identify, like, um, the there is like non-strategist for strategist identification. Yeah. Like if there's a scenario where say. If I put 10 hours into this now, it will save me an hour a month. That's a strategy. But I don't have to put 10 hours into this now. Yeah. The non-strategist will always pass it up. Right. The strategist is like, let me do it. Yeah. But absolutely, I will absolutely do it in this moment right. because I know the impact that it will have. And I think that's really being able to understand that and see it yeah. and then act on it. And so I, I just think, like, as we walk people through this process of just say, like, that first piece is just to help get you thinking in the strategic mode. But it really is, it's willing to look down the line and understand, hey, this is the impact that it will have. And I, I think the, I think the, now I just want to give, can we give some, like, side notes? Yeah. We got just a couple minutes left. Yeah. Um, the first thing is, like, uh, the strength of the strategy is your ability to c communicate it simply and execute it effectively. That's good. Like a robust strategy that no one understands and cannot be executed is absolutely worthless. Right. And so this whole like 120 page handbook, throw it away. Yeah. It does absolutely nothing for you. Unless if you're doing it for like legal reasons, other stuff like that, whatever. Still throw it away. <laughs> I'm just joking. Not a lawyer, so I yeah, just have yeah. no idea. Play one on. Yeah. Um, I think one of the, uh, so like the idea we've talked about before, like an executable strategy is infinitely better than a perfect theory. That's good. And we've railed like episodes in the past of people who think like, oh, I got a lot of ideas. Who doesn't? Right. Like the the ability to have an idea is absolutely nothing. Yeah. The ability to execute it right. is everything. Exactly. Um, but one of the things that I think is just uh, maybe if I'm a non-strategist and I want to become a strategist, I think one of your most effective things is to read biographies and to read case studies, because what strategy really is is it's understanding patterns, and it's understanding the implication of solutions on future patterns. Yeah. And you accelerate that, like you can gain years of experience without having to live additional years by reading about what has happened elsewhere in the world. Yeah. And I do think pe there are people who have a natural intuition on this, but I think you can gain a strategy skill set by having more experience, even if you haven't lived. It's good. It's good. You started this 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 whole podcast by saying we were going to give, uh, you know, an elementary kind of introduction. We've got into some more advanced thinking yeah. as we've gone into it, which is perfectly fine. Just bringing it all the way back to that elementary because we only have a, like a minute left. Um, give a plea, a ploy uh, <laughs> to the to the person who doesn't think they're a strategist or doesn't need to be a strategist oh my um and and because i think they i think we we tag the 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 word strategy to entrepreneur that's fair uh to uh great thinker um and i'm not saying that's wrong i'm saying it's more than yeah it's 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 the it's the dad trying to raise a kid it's the mom who works a job and has to get their kids to all the things it's there's strategies for all this thing you brought up the andy stanley with his there's it's we it's not a business term accurate <laughs> so just give a give a one minute hey this is yeah. why this matters i i would say for the person who is the non-strategist who wants to be right. i want you to understand the skill can be developed yes for the person who's a non-strategist who doesn't care is you're living in the problems of someone else's world that they've created for you. Oof. And wouldn't it be a lot better to create the world than to live in someone else's world <laughs> and just be frustrated about it? Yes. Like you're impacted by yeah. someone's strategy That's or good. your lack of strategy, whether you think you do it or not. I'd much rather create it. That's great. That's where we'll leave it. 228, helping you think strate strategically. <laughs> strategically. 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 Blah, 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 blah. Or <laughs>
Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, or uh, <laughs> keep the trains podcast. from colliding. <laughs> yeah, or the four-year, don't, don't have the four-year fall. Uh, if you're new uh, to the podcast or haven't yet subscribed, to mean the world to us. If you did that now, also post about it. Rate and review or both. Uh, you won't believe how that helps get this podcast in the hands of so many more leaders just like you. Trying to get better like us. We love hearing your stories of how the podcast is helping in your business or, or in your daily lives. Um, if you have a story, visit leadinghope.online and send that to us. You can also DM us on Instagram or Facebook. We would love to hear from you. And remember, everyone has 20 minutes to learn to become a better leader. Make it count. Woo!